Greetings, folks. Once again, we're nestled into the month of April, and on LGR, that means edutainment time. And time for a game about time. This time being where in time is Carmen Sandiego popping up for a plethora of popular personal computers in 1989 by Bruderbund Software. It's actually the fifth main entry into the Carmen Sandiego series, after the original game in 1985, where in the USA in 1986, where in Europe in 1988, and where in North Dakota in early 1989. <laughs> yes, really, how amusingly specific. Then in the latter half of 89 came where in time is Carmen on it, because she just won't stop at messing around with geography anymore. The international woman of mystery is on the loose once again, serving up shady looks in life-size cardboard standee form. And now she's aiming to screw with world history. 1500 years of history, to be specific, spanning from 400 AD to the mid-20th century. It's still a globe-trotting adventure, though, with China, England, France, Holland, India, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Peru, Russia, Spain, and the USA all possible targets of her chronological perversions. But in lieu of traveling by plane to all corners of the Earth, now you have your own TARDIS, or Chrono Skimmer, letting you wander through time and relative dimensions in space while tracking down Carmen and her gang of vile criminals. Where in Time did exceptionally well at retail, selling over 100,000 units by January of 1990 and spending plenty of time in the best-selling educational software charts for years. It's little wonder that it ended up getting a board game version in 1996, a full-on remake with a point-and-click style interface in 1997, and a TV show airing on PBS until 1998, superseding the first Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego show. As before, Where in Time was a half-hour game show, this time being hosted by Kevin Shinnick, along with the late Lynn Thigpen doing a fantastic job playing the chief of the Acme Detective Agency. And yep, it has its own catchy theme song too, though it's not nearly as timeless as the original by Rockabella. Tell me where in time is gone in San Diego. Stop her crime and solve this mystery. Tell me where in time is gone in San Diego. We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Back to the game though, packing a selection of goods similar to previous entries. Notably, a 1,374-page copy of the 1989 New American Desk Encyclopedia, acting as both a reference guide to the game's take on world history and as a form of copy protection, as we'll soon see. There is, of course, the game itself on floppy disk, with both a 5 and a quarter inch and 3 and a half inch copy to choose from in this version 1.1 release. You also get a Bruderbund registration card, a couple of quick reference cards for installing the game on Tandy and IBM PC compatibles, a fold-out poster detailing the most wanted criminals you'll soon be tailing through time, complete with all the naming puns you'd expect from a Carmen Sandiego game, and a 23-page black-and-white detective's manual covering basic setup, gameplay options, and examples on how to solve cases using deductive reasoning and cross-referencing of in-game info and real-world historical facts. Enough time on that, though. It's time for Where in Time is Carmen Time Diego time. Starting with a short time, watching this timely intro sequence complete with an ad-lib rendition of the original Carmen San Diego theme. Then you're greeted with a view of Acme headquarters in San Francisco, this being the first game in the series to establish them being there, as a matter of fact. And man, I dig the way those graphics look in VGA, but I think the game really shines in EGA. There's something special about the way it makes use of the smaller color palette and lower resolution, especially on an actual EGA display like this delectable IBM 5154 monitor. Mmm, crispy 16 color graphics always make me smile in no time. Regardless of your choice in graphical mode, the next order of business is ordering this elevator around. This acts as the game's menu system, with each floor of the Acme building providing something to do at different points in the game. Your first stop should be the personnel department, though, where you'll meet Diane, who explains that becoming a time cadet is exceedingly dangerous, so you need to sign this waiver before moving forward. Ah, liability release forms. How educationally entertaining. 
Once you've brushed aside those pesky rights, congratulations, you're a time cadet. Here's a time machine. Try not to die or screw up the space-time continuum. <laughs> In reality, there's really no risk of either one happening, but the game's commitment to world building is appreciated, and yeah, just like that, you're piloting your very own Chrono Skimmer 325i, presumably built by BMW. No word on whether it's an automatic or standard model, but I'm leaning towards the former, considering the thing immediately begins diagnostics and presents to you your first assignment. The overall process is similar to previous games, where something's been stolen by one of Carmen's vile goons, and it's your job to recover it and put him behind bars. The twist, of course, is that the criminal is traveling through time now, so instead of only tracking down where they are, you need to find out when they are as well. The Federal Time Travel Commission limits all Chrono Skimmer usage, meaning you can only jump around for a set number of in-game hours before time runs out. Even though you, uh, you have a time machine, so part of me thinks you could just get all the clues and then travel back to when you had more hours left to guarantee success, but whatever. Time travel hurts my brain parts, so let's not dwell on it and accept there's limited time to travel through time. Tracking down a vile gang member happens in three stages, as usual. The chase, the warrant, and the arrest. The chase involves traveling to a certain time and place, and then searching for clues as to the thief's identity and intentions. You do this by talking to witnesses, seeing what informants have to say, and using your sonic screwdriver, or chrono scanner, to zap the area and magically reveal useful objects in the vicinity. Each of these options will provide some kind of clue as to the thief's identity, along with where in the world and when in time they're headed next. If you're on the right track, you'll get a threatening little animation upon arriving in a new location. This simply indicates that you're headed the right direction. It's not showing the criminal you're chasing or anything, it's just a random encounter with a bendy cowboy a barrel pirate, a ropey man, a fancy lady, a Robin Hood, or whatever, doesn't matter. They're just silly but useful distractions. All the truly pertinent evidence comes in the form of identifying the unseen perp's characteristics and an array of historical events, people, and artifacts. And this is one reason where in time comes with that desk encyclopedia, so players have a way to quickly look up historical facts in a pre-internet era. The other reason being that it acts as the game's off-disc copy protection, where you'll be asked to type in a heading from a specific page in the encyclopedia after completing your first assignment. But yeah, most of the time you'll be using the book to look up people, places, and things throughout history and decipher how they might relate to things going on in the game. So if an informant says the criminal loves reading French authors, you can infer that that means they prefer Victor Hugo over Rudyard Kipling, for example. Or maybe it's said that the criminal wants to find out who threw the rock that killed Montezuma, so you can assume they'll be traveling to Mexico in the early 1500s. Wild guesses won't cut it here, so it's advised that players take down a few notes as needed, since the game doesn't keep track of location clues. Once you've got what you believe to be a clue, it can then be entered into the ship's computer and cross-referenced against a dossier of known criminals, with the goal being to narrow down the possible suspects to just one. Keep traveling through time and space as needed, look for clues in that location based on the context of the time period, and after you've acquired enough evidence, apply for an arrest warrant. This will awaken your ship's capture robot, a cyborg justice bringer armed to the teeth with little to the arms of justice. However, a warrant isn't enough though, so you've still got to track down the thief's current position in space-time, so keep following those clues until you're attacked by something. Crossbows, catapults, snakes, whatever it is, you'll know it when you see it. As long as you've got enough time left at this point, you can perform a final scan of the area and capture the criminal, whoever he or she may be. Ah uh, yeah, it's time for robotic justice. And there you go. One less time-traveling delinquent in the world, one step closer to tracking down the master thief herself, Carmen Sandiego, who only shows up after you become an ace time detective, so it'll take a while. But yeah, after each successful arrest, congratulations and possible promotions are in order, and after that, it's up to you whether or not you want to continue playing or head back to headquarters. 
If you do decide to head back, why not check out those other floors? Like the detective's lounge, with a coffee maker that rarely works as intended. Or the laboratory, with science experiments that go wrong with a concerning frequency. And don't forget the creepy basement, with its blazing furnace next to the Vault of Records, which is where you manage save games. Then there's the Hall of Fame, a place of triumph once you ultimately succeed, but for a long time is ominously empty with not a single detective having pulled off the task of catching Carmen. Again, I appreciate the world building going on. It paints a picture of Acme being this run-down fly-by-night operation that's barely holding on. Everything's broken and worn out and none of the other detectives are really doing a good job at anything. Despite the place being on its last legs though, these folks are still the best hope at saving the world and human history through federally regulated time travel, so you make do with what you got and accomplish your very best in a terrible situation. Inspiring. And that's where in time is Carmen San Diego. It's got all the sleuthing and worldwide travel you'd expect, augmented by a welcome set of additional challenge in regards to the extra research needed to pinpoint criminals' locations, as well as the hourly time management going on. With every move you make during the chase taking up a number of hours, the whole process is much more intense. Chatting with witnesses, talking to informants, scanning object samples, even running evidence through the computer, all of these slowly whittle away the hours until you either pull off a successful arrest or you're left with nothing and the chief sends a message ordering you back to the present with the case remaining unsolved. It's an effective way of incentivizing players to follow clues much more carefully than before and making sure they're sure about getting their historical facts straight because heading off to the wrong point in space-time is a huge setback, costing multiple hours each leg of the trip, so it's often worth spending a couple of extra in-game hours in each location to be doubly sure where you want to go next. It's all on the player to pay attention to each line in the game, look stuff up and extrapolate data themselves, and either memorize what they find or write things down. That's some darn good edutainment right there, man. Fun, factual, fast-paced, fantastic. Where in Time is Carmen Sandiego is not only a great entry in a classic series, but it's an excellent game in its own right, entirely distinct from the others while keeping that original fun factor intact. If you liked this video, then might I recommend checking out the other edutainment classics or not-so-classics I've covered in the past, or LGR things in general. I upload videos each week on all kinds of topics, so stick around if you'd like. And as always, thank you for watching.